Hey, what's up guys, and welcome to StormCon, one of the many Archon variants that mages have available to use. Since Storm Locust was nerfed, StormCon took a small hit to DPS, but it's still really fun to play and it still pulls really good numbers for being a support class, which makes it really good to use when you're forced to play ranged. In this guide, I'll show you where to print your soul points, which masteries to select, as well as how to play StormCon. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Looking at the soul tree breakdown, you see we go with the popular 40 Stormcaller and 36 Archon split. I'm not going to go over the point distributions here, but there are a few controversial point distributions, such as whether or not you want to take Spark Shower here. If you decide you don't want to take Spark Shower for the 15% movement speed buff, you can move this point over to Inspiration for the 4% spell power increase. And there are a few other ones as well, but I'll let you do your research on your own to figure out which way you'd like to build your Stormcon spec. For the Tertiary Soul, of course, we take 0 Harbinger for the 0 point lightning charge, which equals about in my testing around 100, 100 DPS or so, so nothing huge there, but it is a little bit of added DPS. Moving on to the Masteries, level 61, we take Arcanist Shield. This one's going to allow your critical hits with single target damaging and healing abilities to apply a 3% max health absorb shield once every 6 seconds. Level 62, we take Healing Exigency. This one is going to allow your critical hits with damaging abilities to the next heal that you receive within 5 seconds have a 100% chance to critically hit. Level 63, this one's pretty important. While in combat, instant and channel damaging and healing abilities apply a stack of combat alacrity to you, increasing your unmounted movement speed by 4% per stack, max 3 stacks, so that's a 12% movement speed buff there. But more importantly, it increases the number of allies your lava field, which is one of your support buffs, affects by 20 or 220 and makes lava field instant cast. This is really huge. You want to definitely make sure that you pick this one. Level 64 would take Calculated Annihilation. This increases the damage of your cast time abilities by 8% your channeled abilities by 5%, but it reduces the damage your instant abilities do by 5%. Since the majority of this build is cast time abilities, this one is the uh, no-brainer. Then level 65, of course, we take Arcane Manipulation, just because this is really easy to preload and get uh, some pretty solid DPS out of. So that's it for the Souls and Masteries, guys. Let's go ahead and talk about the macros. So looking at the macros here, there are quite a few. We start with the single target macro. This is going to be what you're going to be operating out of most of the time. Uh, you'll see up here at the top we have these two right here. These are off global cooldown. That's arcane manipulation, and it's also static flux. Uh, this one right here is going to apply the maximum stacks of electrified. Also give you 10% damage done. So right at the beginning of the fight, if you don't already have these preloaded, it'll automatically cast them for you. And then of course we go down to hailstorm. Uh, even though this is an AOE ability, it's an extremely strong single target ability. I believe by itself without any buffs, it does 44k for one global cooldown. So that's pretty strong. That's why it's at the top of the macro there. After that, we have in order Icicle, Volcanic Bomb, Earthen Barrage, Spark Shower, which are all cast time abilities on cooldowns. And then, of course, we have the Spammer Thunder Shock there at the end, just in case you get there and you don't have anything else that you can cast. So moving up to the secondary one, we have a Lava Field macro here. This is simply just cast at GTAE, or Ground Targeted Area of Effect Lava Field. So this is just going to drop a Lava Field on whatever your target is. Um, you can also target yourself and fire this if you want to target the, uh, drop it on yourself. Uh, totally up to you. Then of course we have Flaring Power. This is just going to be simply cast Flaring Power and then it's going to have a raid message that says Flaring Power is up, 15% attack power, spell power for 30 seconds. Just letting your raid know what's going on. Uh, we have a Mana Macro. This is literally just so I can label it because I have so many builds I forget which ones are my mana regions. Uh, going on down we have the StormCon k -Alert set. Up to the top here we have a Preload Macro. This is going to have your Storm Locust in it, which is a 20% buff to air and water abilities. It's going to have Arcane Manipulation and Static Flux in it, which are both uh, off global cooldown abilities that increase damage by 10% and apply your max electrified stacks and also give you the 5 stacks that deal 8,000 echo damage respectively. So that's it for the macros guys, let's talk about the action bar here real quick. So starting at the top left over here we have Storm Armor. This one's really important, you definitely do not want to forget this because it reduces the damage you take by 5% but it also increases the single target air and water damage that you do by 20%. So this is a pretty big one to have up, big 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 DPS gain there. Moving over to the right, we have Lightning Charge. This one's from your Harbinger tree. This one is going to allow you to a 5% chance to deal about 1,000 air damage. doesn't proc too often, but it is worth a little bit of a DPS gain there. Moving over to the right, we have Arcane Manipulation. You typically won't ever have to cast this from here because it's in your pre-pull macro. Moving over to the right, we have Vitality of Stone and Shared Vigor. These two are unique because they look like Bard and Oracle buffs. However, they stack. So pretty big deal. You definitely want to put these up. The, the bummer of it all is, though, they only last for 5 minutes, so you're going to have to keep an eye on those. Of course we have the k -Alert macro here. All these abilities over here just so that I can show you the tooltip values during this demonstration. Moving down to the secondary bar, we have on the Z key, on the Z keybind, we have the pre-pull macro. 
Remember that's going to have your uh, static flux, your inner arcane manipulation, and also your storm locus in it. On the Q key, we have crumbling resistance. This is going to increase non-physical damage taken by 7%. The cool part about the Archon debuffs is that they last 5 minutes. So typically in a raid, you're going to be asked to keep the mobs debuffed. On the E key, we have Ash and Defense. This one is going to increase physical damage taken by 5%. On the R key, we have the debuff macro. I'll explain more about this uh, in the rotation section, but really this just has the three cast time debuffs uh, that you can cast in the beginning of the fight. Over to the right, we have Illuminate. This is going to make enemies take 1,900 additional damage for 20 seconds. This can be triggered once every three seconds. Now typically your bard or oracle is going to be using this type of ability in raid because yours only lasts 20 seconds, but the bards last 60 seconds and the oracles last I believe 62 seconds. Uh, so you're not going to be having to cast this too much, but if you do, uh, you can always swap this to your R key bind if you choose to. Uh, over to the right, of course, we have the mana macro there. Moving on down to the main bar, we have a single target spam macro here. On two, we have raging storm. This is going to be your highest DPS ability here. Uh, on 3 we have Living Storm, this is one of your dots that gets refreshed by your Raging Storm. On 4 we have Lava Field, on 5 we have Flaring Power, on 6 we have Pillaging Stone, and on 7 we have Searing Vitality. These two right here are pretty unique. Um, you'll typically want to duel someone or stack these up before a fight. They only last about 5 minutes though and you'll, you can refresh them on the boss. Uh, this one right here is going to reduce Strength, Dexterity, Wisdom, and Intelligence by 67, but it also provides um, you with extra stats as well, as well as your raid. So pretty, pretty good stuff. There. It actually ends up buffing your vitality of stone uh, by 20%. Uh, of course, steering vitality here. This one's going to give you a nice little endurance buff for having it up. Uh, moving over to eight, we got cyclone. This pulls up to eight enemies to the target's location. This one's actually pretty cool. Uh, moving over to nine, we have a single target cleanse here. Moving over to the middle click, we have cleansing flames. This one is your area of effect cleanse. And the cool part about this is you don't notice that there's a cooldown there. You can spam this. Uh, it does have a cast time of 2 seconds though. And of course the minus key we have Ride the Wind, standard 50% movement buff for 10 seconds. Does cost 30 charge. And on the equals key of course standard break free. So that's it for the action bar guys. Let's go ahead and talk about the k -alerts. Now for Archon there is quite a few different k that we use. Um, that is because I also track a lot of the other classes uh, uh, cooldowns as well to make sure that you're not overlapping. So let's go ahead and see what those look like. So starting at the bottom here, you can see we have Searing Vitality, that's this guy right here, and also Pillaging Stone, that's going to track the stacks of each one of those abilities. Moving over to the top le or bottom left right here, you can see we have the Crumbling Resistance, that's going to give you the timer. Ashen Defense is also going to give you the timer, and right here you can see I have quite a few of these stacked up. I have the Clerics, the Bards, uh, different support abilities there as well, so I can tell if somebody else is casting it. Um, that way I know that if there's nothing there, um, then I'm going to fill that void with Illuminate until the Bardo Oracle or whoever whoever's running it can get that buff up. Moving up to the top left here, we have our Vitality of Stone and Shared Vigor. These two right here are going to last for five minutes. You want to make sure that you keep those up for your raid. Uh, we have Storm Locust here. This is on a 60 second timer, but it's a plus 20% damage for air and water abilities. Very important to keep that up. Up at the top, we have the Living Storm. This is You can track this if you want. Typically, this is, this is going to be refreshed by a Raging Storm. So if all goes well, you should only have to cast that once in the beginning of the fight, and then every time you cast Raging Storm, that should refresh. And I'm moving over to the top left. This is probably the most important part about playing StormCon or PyroCon or whatever Con variant you're playing. It's tracking all the buffs in Raid. Uh, so right here you can see we have Lava Field. We also have Defend the Fallen, and we also have Orchestra. Those are all the buffs that stack. I put them right one on top of each other so that I know that I'm not going to overlap somebody else's buff. Over here we have Flaring Power. I don't have the command to attack from BM because typically... If you're running an Archon, you're not running a full, um, you're not going to be running a BM that's going to be using command to, command of a, to attack. Uh, down here at the bottom left, we have Wild Growth, and we also have Power Core from the Fizztact, so you can make sure, you can check out to see when those are out, so you can try and line stuff up a little easier. And then, of course, if you're running a 48 BM, we have the Enrage cooldown right here. Up at the top, we have this guy right here. Whenever you cast Flaring Power, Flaring Power is a pretty big buff, right? 15% uh, attack power, spell power for 30 seconds. You can notice that the cooldown is 2 minutes. But it has a five minute debuff called Battle Weary that you get that a lot that makes it so that you can't cast it again on anybody that has that debuff. And it gives it to all 20 members of your raid. So even though this is a two minute cooldown, you can't cast it again uh, until the five minutes is up. So that, that right there, right here, is to let you know hey, don't cast Flaring until this guy is gone. And, and it tracks the Battle Weary that's on you, the player. So that's it for the Kalers, guys. I know it seems like a lot, but you'll get, you'll get pretty used to it once you play it a little bit. So now let's go ahead and talk about how to play. 
StormCon. So the first thing you're going to want to do while you're playing an Archon variant is make sure that you're coordinating with the other support classes that are there. Now typically in a normal raid your cooldowns are going to go out around the third or fourth global cooldown. So we're going to do, do the rotation today as if it's going out on the fourth global cooldown. So the first thing you're going to want to do of course is make sure that you preload your Vitality of Stone and your Shared Vigor. Once that's done you're going to target the raid boss and you're going to fire off your Z key a bunch of times to get all your uh, static flux and all that and your arcane manipulation preloaded. Once that's done you're going to go ahead and do a crumbling resistance, ashen defense, volcanic bomb, then you're going to fire off flaring power lava field, and then earth and barrage with R key, spark shower with R key to get all your debuffs up, living storm, hailstorm on one, icicle, and then raging storm. You'll notice your DPS is going to be kind of low in the beginning while you're setting up, and you're going to keep spamming that one key. And after that, it's pretty much it, guys. It's going to be a lot of one key spam. You're going to have to refresh your Storm Locust when it needs to be refreshed. And you're going to have to make sure that you refresh your buffs if they fall off, your Vitality buffs. And you're going to want to use Icicle Raging Storm, Icicle whenever possible. You can see that we're pulling in the high 30s there. We do have Flaring Power and stuff going, of course. But So pretty easy stuff, guys. After the, the initial setup's the hardest part. Once that's done, it's going to be mostly just spamming your one key, using your two key when it's up, and then using your one key some more. You can see that Storm Locust is about to fall off, so we're going to go ahead and refresh that. See, we're pulling like mid 30s or so, which if you guys have watched the Pyromancer video I did, I think I was pulling like 38 or so or 39 with that. So, uh, pretty decent DPS for being a support class, definitely. But uh, that's it, guys. It's really easy to do. You can see we're just spamming 1 and 2 here after our initial setup, and Lava Field's back up, so we can use that. But if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.